Welcome back to Just Chat. And this is the series of videos we do on Thursday and Sunday evenings just for our own amusement. So, last week when I was digging through my files looking for the details on that Scarlett Johansson story, which was totally fabricated, I found another one that I thought I would like to share with you. And this one, this is one of those stories that is far more interesting today in light of subsequent events than it might have been way back when it happened. So, when we come back, we're going to get right into it. So, Maltese Megan, what is that all about? In order to take a look at this story and to pull it apart, we are going to need to go back in time to 2015. No, we're not using a DeLorean. I'm old school. We are going with Sherman, Mr. Peabody, and the Wayback Machine. Yep, we're going to set it for 2015. Now, in 2015, just to refresh your memories on where Nutmeg was in her life, her career, her aspirations, oh Lord, etc., etc., at that time, she had been on suits for four years. Now, despite whatever you may have heard from the revisionist historians, Suits was a cable television show made in Canada. And it never even broke the top 100, even toward the end, when Nutmeg was publicly linked with the sock puppet. So, no, this was not a hit television show. This was a, a cable TV show, just one of many, many cable TV shows. And, in fact, I do think Honey Boo Boo made it into the top 100. So, just for a point of comparison, Nutmeg was the sixth in line on a six-member ensemble cast. Now, it's important to keep in mind that she was well over 30 in 2015. And she was playing a character who was probably intended to be a good 10 years younger than she was. So her shelf life, that expiration date, oh gosh, it was ticking like a time bomb. And she had actively pursued additional uh, employment opportunities uh, in uh, acting, as well as other venues. But at this point, they were diminishing, both in terms of number and quality. Uh, during the time that she was on Suits, she took on a handful of additional roles, most of which were in very forgettable made-for-TV rom-coms, the sort of thing you would encounter on, like, the Hallmark Channel or something. It's nothing significant. And this was, in fact, as I say, down from the number of roles she had taken on prior to that, though not by much. This is not a woman who had a great number of credits to her career at any point. But at this point in time, 2015, the desperation was starting to show a little. She had engaged publicists and she was anxious to break out of this sort of actress slash model thing that she had. And by the way, at the time, that was what her Wikipedia page said. And she was hoping to do something else. Now, what else she was hoping to do is anybody's guess, because let's face it, 
it, it's not like there was anything there to draw from. She was simply casting about for other opportunities. And whether they tied into her own personal skills, such as they are, or interests, again, such as they are, was completely irrelevant. That clock was ticking, and she needed a, a soft place to land. So, 2015 rolls around, and she and her publicist, and this is Gina Nelthorpe Cohn, who was subsequently ghosted the moment Nutmeg met the sock puppet, went to Elle magazine, and Nelthorpe Cohn had been pitching Nutmeg to everybody she could think of, and there were no bites. So, go to Elle magazine, where Nutmeg tells the editor she has this great idea for a story. She wants to trace her roots in Malta because she is Maltese. She had a great, 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 heaven only knows what, grandmother from Malta. Oh, and another one in that family line, I believe the mother of that great, great, great grandmother, who had worked as a cook at Buckingham Palace. So, Elle, I, I guess Nutmeg was persuasive, because Elle agreed to to look at this article, you know, once she had come back from Malta. And they arranged with the Maltese Bureau of Tourism to host Nutmeg in this Maltese trip, all expense paid, uh, nice little Maltese vacation where she would be um, hosted in palaces and fine restaurants and the beautiful scenery in Malta. I have never been to Malta, but I've seen photos and it's clearly a very lovely place. So Nutmeg, in preparation for the trip, uh, had been told, she alleges, now she alleges, so take that with a grain of salt, that once she got to Malta, she would feel very comfortable. She would just look like all of the people there. Not sure that happened exactly. Uh, and I think that was a pivotal issue in everything that went on around the Maltese trip. So she shows up in Malta, and it is just one giant photo shoot for her. It's like selfie, 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 selfie. Uh, they had Maltese photographers who were taking professional photos. She was hosted by um, the governor of Malta. And this was really a nice little vacation. But then Nutmeg comes back. And the article that she writes for Elle magazine doesn't even mention Malta. So... I'm pretty sure the Maltese government was not really thrilled when they, it's like not even the word Malta showed up in the article. So I can't imagine they were thrilled. The article is this article that she wrote for Elle magazine in which she spoke about her identity as a biracial woman and how she coped with racism and whatever, yada, yada, yada. She had three of her stock racist stories to haul out. Uh, her father buying her that set of dolls, which he made from combining a black set and a white set, and checking the little box about race in school. You know, when her father said, just draw your own box in. And then uh, a comment that was made to her that, I don't know, unconscious bias, I, I did not find the comment to be overly racist. Or, in fact, the truth is it could have had nothing to do with racism uh, at all, in which someone had said, uh, asked her about her background. She explained that her, her mother was black, her father was white, and they were divorced. And the 
college friend had said, well, that figures. Who knows? The truth is, if someone had said that to me, my first thought would be, gee, you're reading too many movie magazines. Not everyone in Hollywood is divorced. I would not have interpreted that as a racist comment. I would have interpreted that as a, a very characteristic view of Hollywood people held by the rest of the country. But hey, what can I say? So anyway, this is her coming out piece. She is announcing herself to the world as a biracial person. And the Maltese bit is completely forgotten. So, let's go back to the beginnings of our story. The Maltese great-great-great-great-grandmother and the Buckingham Palace cook great-great-great-great-grandmother. Well, fabrications, period. Let's start with the Buckingham Palace cook. Nutmeg alleged that one of her ancestors, a woman named Mary Bird, had worked as a cook in Buckingham Palace in 1856. Well, there was an M. Bird who showed up in 1856 in the Buckingham Palace payroll re records, but it was not nutmeg's great-great-grandmother. So how do we know this? Because in 1856, Mary Bird was Mary McHugh. She wasn't Mary Bird until four years later when she married Thomas Bird. So total fabrication. This is just nothing. It is the coincidence of a, a fairly common name. That's all. So let's move on from that one, because this is nutmeg. You got to know, the lies and the grifts are not stopping here. So let's take a look at the allegedly Maltese ancestor. Well, that would have been the child of Mary and Thomas Bird, who nutmeg alleged was born in Malta. Not a Maltese person at all. Mary and Thomas Bird were Anglo-Irish, and they were in Malta briefly because Thomas was a soldier in the British Army and was stationed there. They did have at least one child, a son, who was born in Malta. Whether or not their daughter was born in Malta, I haven't been able to establish, but even if she was born in Malta, she would have been Anglo-British, not Maltese. Uh, Mary and Thomas subsequently emigrated to Canada, where Thomas died and Mary remarried. So this whole Maltese connection boiled down to nothing more than an ancestor in the British Army being stationed in Malta. And here's the good part at a time when Malta was under the colonial rule of the British. We'll get back to that. So the grift comes in with the Maltese government being shamefully used. And they, they supported this whole adventure, assuming that they were going to get some favorable press because L magazine had approached them. Uh, they had professional photographers who had done work. They were never compensated for their work. They still own the pictures that have been circulated of Nutmeg at, after the trip. Uh, by the way, the pictures were never published in L. These were, I guess they became part of Nutmeg's personal portfolio and were circulated after the fact. But yeah, they certainly cannot have felt very good about the extent to which they were used. Meanwhile, Elle magazine had been expecting a story about Nutmeg's search for her Maltese roots and instead got another story 
which by the way, they were in no position to refuse because it was a story about a presumably white actress coming out as mixed race. And if you, if you reject a story like that, boy, that is a seriously cancelable event. So, are they going to refuse it? No, of course not. Nutmeg simply pay, played the race card and played it very successfully. Uh, and I think this is the first time, possibly, that Nutmeg did, in fact, successfully play the race card. It is possible that her role in Suits had been another skillful playing of the race card because even though Nutmeg had not publicly declared herself to be a person who was uh, of mixed race ancestry, the character she played on Suits did eventually uh, become identified as mixed race. So, did she get the role because the people at Suits were looking for an actress who appeared Caucasian, who could later in a surprise twist be revealed as biracial? Who knows? Obviously, no one would admit that. That, too, would be a cancelable action because certainly hiring an actress of color based on the fact that she looked white is very problematic. Did they do it? Who knows? Are they going to admit it? Good Lord, no. No matter what their reasoning for hiring this mixed race actress and later bringing that out as a surprise twist in the plot of the show, whatever the reasonings and whatever the machinations that led the show to that point, that's way too dicey to publicly own. That, in fact, might be the first time Nutmeg successfully played the race card, but the L article is the first time we can prove that she did. So, what are we looking at here? We're looking at a woman in 2015 who was playing the part, because by this point her character had been established as biracial. She's playing a biracial part and looking around for an ancestry that would indicate she was, in fact, Caucasian? I don't know. I, I walk away from that with a very sort of cringy feeling. Nutmeg said that she had been told, and this comes from her blog, The Tig, uh, that she had been told prior to going to Malta that she would fit in there, that she would look like the Maltese people. And she said that she did feel like she fit in. The problem is the Maltese people are not, in general, a mixed race population. They are a population largely of Southern Europeans. Malta is off the coast of Sicily and it's in the Mediterranean. So I, I do not understand why Nutmeg would have come up with this crazy idea in the first place. I've done a lot of online searching uh, of Maltese people and what they look like. And the fact is they look like Italians or Greeks or other Mediterranean people. They do not look like people who would be conspicuously identifiable as mixed race. Although I have no doubt that some people on Malta are mixed race, simply the way some people everywhere are mixed race. But it seems at this point, Nutmeg was casting about for an identity, any kind of identity she could find that would lead her to the next step. Now, it is my personal belief that her major influence at this point was Victoria Beckham. 
And I base that on the fact that Nutmeg wanted to be uh, a style, a fashionista. Just She wanted to be a brand ambassador for these fashion houses, perfume companies, etc. And she seemed to be just actively seeking out relationships with sports figures at this time. So, yeah, sure looks like it was Victoria she was going after. Um, however, Gwyneth Paltrow was another possibility because Gwyneth Paltrow had transitioned from acting over to business entrepreneur with her cosmetics company or whatever that com goop. I don't know what they make. I really don't know. But that's where Gwyneth Paltrow had transitioned to. Uh, Emma Watson was another one because Nutmeg was actively trying to establish herself as a UN spokesperson. The fact is, she was just throwing everything she could against the wall to see what stuck. And at some point, either immediately before she went to Malta or immediately after she got there, it apparently occurred to her that this whole I'm white just of a different ethnicity was not going to work for her and she just very suddenly jumped ship and went over from my Maltese roots to my mixed race roots and we can trace it to that Maltese trip just very very clear I'm sure a big part of it was that her career in acting was going nowhere fast. She had very much outlived her usefulness as a Hollywood, well, Canadian, whatever, actress, because she had established herself, uh, and I find this perfectly logical, as the hot chick. That was actually one of her credits in one of her movies, Hot Chick. And you can be a hot chick when you're in your 20s, but the movie industry really does not allow you to be a hot chick when you are in your 30s going on your 40s. So, yes, she was seeing that part of her career, those options, dwindling and needed something else. But being nutmeg, she didn't care what it was. Didn't matter if it had any relationship to her, her interests, whatever they may be, her talents, again, whatever they may be, or her life in any way. She wanted to get herself a television show as a food critic of all things. She wanted to establish herself as a wellness guru. Again, where do we where, where does that come from? As a fashion icon. She was just throwing things out there. So now let's fast forward to the 2020s and take a look at the nutmeg and sock puppet hagiographic Netflix docudrama where they threw out not only their own personal grievances with the royal family, but basically called the institution Colonialist 2.0. No, no, Empire 2.0, that's what it was. Empire 2.0. That was pretty rich coming from the sock puppet who owes everything he ever has or ever will have to his connection to the royal family. He did nothing but benefit from whatever the empire brought to the table. And now we find that nutmeg as well 
was using that colonialist empire connection for her own benefit. Remember, Thomas Byrd was in Malta as a British soldier during the period in which Britain was the colonial overlord of Malta. So yeah, they have it on both sides. And I'm, I can't help but find it really, really rich that those two are perfectly willing to exploit the benefits of their colonialist connected ancestors. They're fine with that. And then we move into the 21st century and now they are doing nothing but criticizing the, the very families, respectively, his and hers, that are responsible for virtually everything they have. So, yeah, that one struck me as very amusing. Um, so, before she was 43% Nigerian, she was apparently some percentage of Maltese, and it was a total fabrication. There is not a shred of truth to this, but you can still go online and find articles declaring nutmeg to be a, one of the famous, when they do lists of famous people of certain ethnicities, yes, you can still go online and find that Nutmeg is uh, one of the famous people of Maltese descent. Nope, nope. Total fabrication. So, that was one I wanted to share with you because that was one I found exceptionally interesting. And I'm going to continue to prowl through my files because they are just absolutely full of these little gems. Sometimes it's nothing more than a little quote I found somewhere, but I am going to do it. I'm going to continue to research it, continue to rip it apart where we can. Oh, and I must credit Tom Bauer, Revenge, the skeleton of that story. He only devoted about, I think, a page and a half, maybe two pages to it, but the skeleton of that story is right here. So, Yes, thank you, Tom Bauer. All right, we're going to take a look at a slideshow on the way out. Uh, I hope to see you all next week. And in the meantime, have a terrific day.